morning. This video, and I'm going to try and not to ramble, but there's a lot to discuss, and this stuff is here is mostly just to look at until I can get through the video. There will be other pictures and some other video that I'm going to insert into this, but uh, I have a lot to cover in regards to I own a Chamberlain LiftMaster Pro model 3280-3280-267. Came with the house and it was installed approximately 12 years ago and this is 2024. The uh, device, the, the door opener was working pretty well for, well, the, the last year or so that we've been in this house. Distance wise, you'd pull up in front of the house press you know the the remote and it would open the door sometimes you have to hold the button down I had programmed my home light in my car and I could get a little bit more distance out of it maybe about 80 feet but either way it oftentimes sometimes you had to hold the button down and I don't know if this was age or you know if something else was going on well in uh, January we had our house painted of 2024 and weirdly enough I'm sure this has nothing to do with it but you know it's very strange coincidence have the house painted and while the house was being painted we didn't try to open the garage doors with the remotes after the garage the house was painted uh, we went to try to use them and they weren't working hardly at all you, you could barely get 25 feet maybe sometimes you could get 40 I was also having trouble with the home link in the car you know, a lot of times I would have to hold the button for a very long time and, and sometimes it just wouldn't work at all. So I started doing some research on the, the internet, found some videos on YouTube of some guy who claimed that it could be cold solder joints. Some people were saying it was your batteries. Uh, some people claimed that if you just ran a uh, wire from your current wire out, in front of your house that it would fix it. So here's what I tried. I put new batteries in the remotes. I ran a coax to an antenna outside the garage and this didn't make any difference but we'll get into that later. I took out the circuit board and I checked it for cold soldering joints, the circuit board in the garage door opener. Um, I didn't really see any but I, I re-soldered some that yeah, it kind of looked iffy. Might so extending the antenna of the unit to a full wang, wavelength. That is, I the unit has an antenna that's like a quarter wavelength, and I did a calculation on what a full wavelength antenna would be for 315 megahertz, and it comes out to just under 36 inches. So I added that to the antenna. Didn't seem to make a difference. Many people claim that changing your light bulbs, if you were using LED light bulbs, that you should sh switch to standard incandescent bulbs. I tried that. It didn't make any difference. They, they claim that it caused interference. Now, I used my SDR radio, and I w walked around the house looking for interference on 315 megahertz, and there was none, nothing. Uh, if I monitored with, with the, I have a different one that has a wider bandwidth, and if I monitored that one for hours, I would see what appeared to be other 315 megahertz devices, like possibly garage doors or who knows what in the neighborhood, but these were triggered very, it didn't trigger very much. They weren't very often, and they were nowhere near the garage door. They were, you know, almost hardly at all. Uh, there's an Air Force base nearby, and they they transmit on 300 me megahertz in that range. There was nothing from them. I tried recalibrating this remote. I would highly advise that you don't do that. Uh, it involves having a an SDR radio tuned to 315 megahertz. Press the button, see where it's transmitting, and you move the little screw in here just a tiny bit I mean just barely a nudge one way or the other until you get it onto 315 megahertz or as close as you can get it needs to be within uh, 0 0.01 percent or within 315 kilohertz of 315 megahertz that didn't make a difference I purchased this Chamberlain 953 EVP2 
it has no calibration and it transmits pretty close to 315 megahertz is off by about 10 kilohertz but no big deal this thing claims to have a range of 1500 feet it uh, does not appear to have anywhere close to that range I don't know where they came up with that number some people were like well why don't you just use your phone app well this is you just reach up and you press a button door opens reach up press a button door closes with the phone app I have to pull the phone out log into the phone open the app and tell it to open the door and I'm not doing that you know unless it's like an emergency uh, I took my when I was testing some of the equipment I used my SDR radio and tested my Subaru home link in my car I found that it was extremely strong signal which is probably why it never really worked properly in the garage if you press the button it sometimes I think it was just overloading uh, it was giving it too much signal at the time this one seemed to be dead or it seemed to work intermittently you'd press the button and nothing would happen and I confirmed that with the SDR that sometimes you'd press the button and I found that on the back of this is this little microchip and one of the legs on that had a cold solder joint it wasn't fully soldered in place uh, so resoldering that fixed the intermittent problem I checked my wife's and it was hers didn't seem to have that problem I tried reprogramming the home link in my car with one of my remotes and it I did have some trouble programming it but once I did get it to accept it um, I still had trouble getting the getting it to open the door I th thought possibly this capacitor could be bad it is 12 years old I replaced it with a new one didn't matter I tested the old uh, capacitor and it seemed to be fine I pulled the main board in the door opener and I started taking out the electrolytic capacitors and I tested them with an ES ESR meter and this is the ESR meter I used I found there were three electrolytic capacitors on the main board in the door opener that were testing with very high ESR uh, there were several that tested fine but I replaced them anyways uh, there was one loose trace to one of the capacitors and I don't know if that was my fault or if it was always there um, I had to fix that by bridging the uh, trace with the leg of the capacitor to the component that it was going to there is one cap uh, one capacitor electrolytic capacitor on the power supply it had low ESR which is good I left I was going to change it but I did not have the right voltage um, I didn't want to go too high of a voltage because the, the capacitor wouldn't have fit and really wasn't necessary and then I resoldered anything on the circuit board that looked even slightly suspicious even though I had done it before uh, I had and I also I used my uh, I have a video microscope and I went over the board looking for issues and couldn't find any I removed the original antenna and added a short coax lead going to a BNC connector so I can easily uh, I could easily experiment with different antennas and uh, I've got a picture of that my testing showed a slight increase in distance from doing this but here's here's the things that I found while working on this it's kind of a, a little recap the old remotes use a tuning capacitor to align the signal um, it appears that the they might tune the wide button at 315.5 megahertz instead of right on 315 megahertz as the Chamberlain FCC paperwork indicated the FCC papers says that it's supposed to be 315 megahertz plus or minus 0.1 percent or 315 kilohertz 
FCC tolerance is 0.25%. If you want to find the paperwork, Google the FCC ID on the back of your unit and the word FCC ID and you'll you'll find uh, the documentation. Uh, this one is lacking certain information but this one has a whole lot more information. All the remotes I tried had a signal that wandered even the home link. On my circuit board there was a space for attaching a coax connector which is an option on some versions of the Chamberlain uh, garage door openers. I did not have a, a surface or a uh, PC board mount for the type that it wanted so I just hardwired a, uh, some coax to it and then um, secured it with tie wraps so it wouldn't rip out. Um, I was still having problems with the handheld r remotes but the my home link in the car was back to normal but what I found was that I had to basically relearn all the remotes to the garage door opener. I, I think the the memory in the garage door opener had maybe become corrupt or something but all this stuff I mean it did help it did increase the distance in some cases well, the home link would, would increase the distance, but these two remotes still didn't work right. Sorry, I'm getting out of order. So after I relearned it, all the remotes started working from about 50 feet away. What eventually seems to have really helped more than all the other stuff, I mean, like I said, it could be that the, the capacitors were causing a problem, the memory was corrupt, but the final thing that really helped was moving my antenna from where it dangled down from the opener over to right up against the wall where it was between the two garage doors. Once I did that, I was able to open the garage door from 145 feet away with this remote and uh, what was it? Yeah, actually both of these about the same, 145 feet the uh no no the 100 145 feet for this one 154 feet for the the newer one and 177 feet from my home link in my car so that's two houses down using uh my car so i uh, i hope this information helps um this was a big pain in the butt most people have just replaced their uh their unit by now but i'm a little bit more persistent than that. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching.